Do you want to learn about how nuclear power reactors evolved over time? Or do you simply want to explore some of the biggest nuclear reactor disasters in the world like Fukushima and Chernobyl and explore how public perceive them? Well, this book helped me see the light when it comes to nuclear power technologies, especially when it comes to nuclear tech and how it can be applied to helping combat climate change. Well, if you want to learn more about this book summary, keep watching this video. Hey friends, my name is Osama. I have a background in nuclear engineering and on this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. I also like to review and summarize some of the books that I've read in the past and this book was by far one of my favorites. And let's jump into this video. Well, I'm going to start off with my initial impressions of this book. Scott L. Montgomery did a really good job in both going into the specific details on certain topics of this book, but also giving a comprehensive breakdown of several topics when it comes to nuclear power technologies. He explores the technical fundamentals of the technology and how it developed, but also the history and how these technologies have influenced the general public and society as a whole. Overall, how we've seen these technologies and why we should shift our perspective when it comes to nuclear tech, seeing the facts and also risk perception of this tech and ultimately seeing that light. I really enjoyed how he crafts that narrative over time and presents those topics uh, in this book. It's honestly an ocean's worth of knowledge, but also a phenomenal storyline. So a really good balance between the two. That's honestly my overall impression of this book. However, who should read it? I think this book is ideal for people that are interested in both the technology, public policy, and also just general history of nuclear tech. So if you're an engineer, if you're a scientist, if you're a communicator, if you're into technical communications or, or simply just interested for the sake of interest, this is a book that I really recommend picking up. What's also great about this book is that it's written in a very simple way. So if you're someone that's really new to the area of nuclear technology, picking up this book, you'll get a great introduction. You'll be able to understand it from finish to end. And you don't also have to read this book cover. You can also read specific chapters in this book and it will also make sense. So that's something that you can do. Pick up the hard copy, go through table of contents and really highlight which topics you're interested in exploring first. So that's what I would recommend to be honest. Initially, at first, when you pick up the book and read the title, it says seeing the light case for nuclear energy. So it comes across as very biased. However, when you're reading this book, you see that the author makes a really good balanced argument for, for both sides of the coin, right? So it's not necessarily a very biased book that's just pushing the agenda of nuclear power, but rather it sees the other perspectives when it comes to nuclear tech. So that's something that a lot of people would be surprised about when reading this book. All right, so I'm gonna share my favorite parts of this book. And number one is nuclear power disasters. All right, so nuclear power disasters uh, like Fukushima and Chernobyl were explored in depth in this book. And the reason why is because those two disasters were the biggest disasters in the history of nuclear power. What's really interesting to know is that these two events were perceived by the public and governments to be a lot more dangerous than they actually were. So the author delves into the numbers behind the radiological exposures and also how emergency preparedness took place during these events, right? He breaks those down and talks about how communicators, especially when it comes to government officials and technical experts can really improve on their technical communication when it comes to risk events like Fukushima or Chernobyl. So that was a really important lesson learned. Also the radiological fallout of events like Fukushima and how they weren't necessarily large issues, but the repercussions of the regulatory bodies and the regulatory limits that were set up at the time time led to large scale evacuations. So this book, what it does really well is simplifies radiation and radiological harm, especially across a large population and shows that, hey, listen, like these events need to be reevaluated and reinterpreted uh, so that, you know, in the future we can develop regulations and effective planning from the lessons learned from these events. Also risk communication. I think risk communication is such an important topic. It's where you take complex technical scenarios, things that are ongoing, and you effectively communicate those to the public so that that they understand. It's kind of like what I'm doing here on this channel, it's simplifying technical concepts, but it's a little bit more difficult because you're doing it as things evolve. You may see that with the Zephyrizia nuclear power plant in Ukraine, where things are taking place and the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and many other organizations need to effectively communicate what's happening on the ground, just so that people have a good understanding of things that are happening and not necessarily overreact or underreact. The next favorite topic of mine were the first nuclear reactors. Now, nuclear reactor technologies, that's kind of like my bread and butter, but I wasn't aware in depth of how these generation one technologies influence our nuclear power technologies to this day. So it was great to delve into the history of the first nuclear power reactor like Chicago Pile One. So they were first pile reactors.
reactors, right? These piled reactors were developed in Russia, in Canada, like the Z reactor in various countries across the world where they would experiment with these designs. And what I found really interesting was how these reactors were taken by countries and, and modified according to the resources available and the technologies available in those countries. Okay, so you see the United States, they had a really good understanding of enrichment technologies. So you see them implementing enrichment technologies into submarine reactor types with the pressurized water reactors. Also with Canada, they had a really good grasp of heavy water tech, right? So you see Canada developing its own Kandu nuclear power reactor or the Soviet Union, which had the graphite, right? And it started developing its own uh, technologies based on that. Also, what I found really interesting was the battle of technologies when it comes to PWRs or pressurized water reactors or sodium fast cooled reactors. There was actually those two design choices that the US military had to select for its submarine reactor designs. Ultimately, it chose the PWR reactor, but sodium fast cooled technologies, you know, we're looking at those technologies at the moment to burn nuclear waste and sustainably close the nuclear fuel cycle. So what I found really, really fascinating was how that decision came to be and how it was influenced by politics and also reactor design. It's really interesting how historical events that took place decades ago affect our technologies to this day. Yeah, phenomenal. All right. So another one of my favorite topics discussed in this book is the future of nuclear power, really how demographics are changing and energy trends are also changing. Montgomery points out how the hub of nuclear power was once in the West, but now you'll see the shift toward Asia, Asia quickly adopting this technology and mass adopting it. So he says in this book that the new nuclear era will be centered in Asia in developing and emerging states. As a result, billions of tons of carbon emissions and lethal air pollution will not be emitted and millions of lives will be saved. And yet much talk today about climate change and the energy future ignores or minimizes the nuclear option. So ultimately, the developing world will have the most positive impact from this technology. You know, the developing world is heavily reliant on coal and fossil fuels at the moment to really power its development on a fast track. But you'll see with nuclear power tech, like countries like China, Korea, and many other nations in Asia are considering this technology, adopting it very, very fast. So it's great to know that humans, in a sense, will benefit from this tech. But you know, it also left me with a bit of sadness to see that here in the West, in countries like Canada, United States, that we're a little bit falling behind. But I'm sure that with SMR technology and maybe innovation in this space, we can catch up. Hopefully there's still time to catch up. Another topic that I'm not really proficient with, but really interested in knowing more about is the economics of nuclear power reactors. So what I love about this book is the author breaks down how the economics of nuclear power reactors work from start to finish, from cradle to grave, how utilities determine success with these power technologies. Because at the end of the day, a utility needs to make money. They need to capitalize on these projects. You need investors and you also need technology that's proven to work. You need to analyze that risk and really make the right decision. So in this book, the author says that as we will discuss later in this book, the original 40 year licensing period for reactors first established in the US was never intended to serve as a lifespan for any nuclear power plants, but instead the amortization period, the time needed for all loans to be paid off. What this means is that 40 or 45 year old nuclear power plants are not past retirement or necessarily old. What's really interesting is that when it comes to nuclear power technologies, that's one of the thoughts or misconceptions that I originally had. I thought that these uh, pressure vessels were originally meant to have uh, a lifetime or lifespan of 40 years when it comes to PWR technologies. So it's really remarkable to know that this is simply the time it takes to pay off the technology. And you're seeing reactors in the United States being licensed for 60 years and now even 80 years, right? So it's quite phenomenal how even though I'm in this industry, I've learned a lot about the economics of power reactors from this book. Next is a really spicy topic, but a really important topic, which is the development of nuclear weapons. So the author delves into the history of how countries across the world had their own plans or strategies to develop these weapons. And, you know, the NPT, the Non-Proliferation Treaty, right, which countries across the world had signed, looks at prohibiting the development of these weapons. Also, he looks into the future of nuclear proliferation, right, and why models that have been established by the International Atomic Energy Agency and international regulators, they are so effective, right, safeguards for these weapons technologies. So really delving into these weapons and the details behind the politics that took place. That was really interesting to learn about. You know, one thing that I was really amazed by was a country like South Africa once had nuclear weapons, but quickly after there was a change in leadership, those weapons were discarded. Also, the author delves into how nuclear power reactors can be used as a vehicle to burn fuel from these weapons. So this has been done in the United States on a mass scale. So large scale inventory of weapons, they were taken, dismantled, and you know, new fuel that was produced was burned in reactors 
used for decades on end, right? So there's initiatives where nuclear power technologies can be used to disarm or take these weapons and ultimately get rid of them. So I think nuclear power tech or nuclear technologies, there's the good side, which is the power technology itself. Then there's the evil side, which is the weapons. Weapons are very difficult to create, right? Not any country across the world has that capability. But I think through international cooperation, we can really have that strategic oversight, but also remove the weapons that are existing in this world today as well. So overall, how did this book influence my life? Well, the greatest influence this book had is being a reference system for a wealth of topics that I can always refer back to when I'm creating presentations, lecture slides, or even preparing another video on my YouTube channel. A lot of the videos that I develop, you know, in terms of topics came from this book, such as the UAE video that I created, a video on Chicago Pile One. There were several videos on my channel that this book helped me seed in terms of the idea and helped me develop. Overall, I highly recommend this book, even if you're browsing through the table of contents and reading the parts in which you're interested in. I think it's worth both your time and your money. I think Scott is so well written. Uh, he's concise. He's well researched. You're going to gain a lot from this book. So I would highly recommend it. And if you're interested in learning more about some of the other book reviews that I've done, I would recommend checking out the book review for Bill Gates, How to Stop a Climate Disaster. That is a phenomenal book as well, taking a very different perspective, more of a holistic view of the idea of climate change, of innovation and energy technologies other than nuclear as well. That's another really good book that I would add to my book list. And if there's any other book recommendations that you have, please comment in the comments below. I would love to add more nuclear related books that are recommended by you to my own personal library and start reading those and then reviewing them in the future. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, till next time, take care. Thanks for watching. Bye.